everybody. Um, welcome to our panel today. Uh, we're, we have Devishi here. Uh, she's my really good friend and we're going to be talking about her college experience. Devishi, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? Um, so I'm Devishi Seid and I am now a sophomore at the School of the Art Institute of Chicago, which is an art college in downtown Chicago and it is directly linked to the Art Institute, um, which is one of the biggest art museums in the world. And it is just an amazing experience, like just going to the museum whenever you can, whenever you want to. And I'm a painting slash sculpture major, and I'm trying to like figure out different streams and what I really want to do. Yeah. So, um, like, we choose, choose our different classes like so I take like a lot of morning classes and like I keep a balance between morning and night classes and um, we have different like buildings because it is a city campus we do not have a campus so it's just like buildings in the city and I go my, my classes are in the furthest building so I walk there have my painting class or my sculpture class um, it's like a three hour straight. So your studio classes are six hours long. So three hours, then you have a one hour um, lunch break and then three hours again. And in case you're having a night class, it's like split into two days. So you have three days, one class, and then the same class is like three days, another day. So, I mean, three hours, another day. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it's not that stressful. It depends on how many classes you have on that day and how you think and like what you think you can handle so um initially like my like college life wasn't that active so i would just go back to my room and like chill or like hang out with a few friends but um usually i would start my day at around eight o'clock because my classes usually start at nine one or like nine a.m one p.m or six p.m so there are like three different like timing slots, which are usually like there for every class. Um, and then I, depends on the day, I end at either 9 p.m. or 4 p.m. And it's just, it's very normal. It's, it goes very smoothly. And then after class, like I usually work on things or like weekends when I'm free, I go to the studios, I work. And it's because there's a lot of like physical work to do. And like I had two like on like um, classes like art history and then a liberal arts class. So that is actually way smoother and not too much work and not too much like stress. The best part about my college is the fact that my college is interdisciplinary. So I don't need to have a major or a minor, which for me is the best part because I genuinely don't know what I want to do. I know what I love to do, but how do I pursue that as a career option? Like, um, and like, what are the different materials? Like, cause the our world of art is huge. It's massive. Like, you know, you go to a like art, art college, and then you see like, there are so many different fields in art. Like there are so many different things that you couldn't even like imagine like existed. So the fact that it's interdisciplinary, I have the like advantage of like trying out so many things. Like I did sculpture, painting, I going to try out ceramics, fabrics, you know, fibers. And it's just like amazing. And like, it can also be a disadvantage because like sometimes you can be confused as to what you want to do in the end. But in my case, I'm like, kind. I kind of know what things I want to do. The worst part is that maybe um, there aren't as many Indian people at SAIC. So my batch only had 15 people overall of Indian people. And then some have eight, some have like four. So um the fact so the community is very small and sometimes it's not as like knit together but it's not like that bad in the end because sometimes you find like those indian friends and then you can connect with them you know it's it's not like it's it's not the worst part but i did kind of feel that because i was expecting more indian students maybe that's why um, so yeah, that was for me like a huge letdown also. 
there's a lot of like different types of cultures mixed at SAIC like a few people are laid back because you've gone to an art college like you know you know you're kind of privileged like because art is a very difficult field so majority of the people have to be driven because otherwise like it's really hard to make a living for yourself a lot of people are like very focused but then like you know there are many different types of people as in like um there's a difference in clothing or like it's just like i mean for me initially it was very hard to fit in like you know to get to know people but um it's a you need to make the effort to reach out but it's fine it's not like a big deal and then diversity like SAIC majority are like um white students but then we have a huge chinese and korean um student um in ex also um indians are very less and then we have like you know people coming from different ethnic like the people from taiwan are also there like as much like surprisingly like the number of students from taiwan and india are more or less the same and um there are a lot of like black people also so it's there is some diversity but then um it's majority white chinese and korean so like from what i have just observed SAIC actually supports undergraduate students a lot because uh, so for freshmen they have this there's this huge exhibition like you know parents come in and so I was actually I like and then you need to submit your portfolio like your sketches so I got in for site site which was a huge thing for me and then there are many different streams also so it was like you know it's a big opportunity for students but unfortunately like. um this exhibition was moved online and as like a sculpture student and i was going to give in a sculpture and i'm not a huge fan of computers so i had a very tough time like um doing working on that but it's a really good opportunity cuz you know you get rejected also and you know it kind of shows you just a little clip of the real world that hey like you're not always going to be accepted and you're going to go through like some failures and um so we have um different exhibition centers for in our residence halls and like just generally we have another center for exhibitions so you have a lot of opportunities to put your work out there which is just amazing and like also like you obviously get rejected and then it's a, it's another experience you know and like obviously um undergraduate students have like a lot of jobs also they can do so um you have a lot of part time jobs with like international affairs or like showing around campus or then we have wood shop metal shops so like mostly all the like people who are there at the wood shop or something like that are students and they are working there and like that's also another really good experience So I was in housing only for one year, and I've moved out now. But um, SAIC has three residence halls. So one is one six two, which is like the biggest one, and where majority of the freshmen go for the first year, and because and it's the most social one, and it has like a lot of living spaces, like huge big living spaces. It has two three studios, one huge studio. and it's generally like very impressive you have two laundry rooms and at each floor has another living space and a tv so it's like very nice and each like week um the ras would hold like an event where anyone can come in do it, like activity like once they had like kimbap making which is like the korean um sushi rolls so and like you know you have exposure to different cultures also because all the ais are also from different places um so that was really nice and um i was and then there's jones which is like a smaller one which i was in and the jones seemed to be actually very quiet and like anti social like like the halls were like very small like the corridors so 
I think that's like a major contribution to why I might have felt like a little like hard adjusting in my first year. But then it was also quieter and like, you know, usually things get stolen also in studio spaces or the laundry room. So that did not happen in Jones, but that does happen in 162. And then like the rooms are huge. So it depends, like I had a corner room, so I ended up getting a small room, but that was fine. But there are also huge rooms and each room has a kitchen and a private washroom, like, you know, if, uh, to take a bath or like just private stuff. So um, that is actually very good because majority of the colleges don't have that. And you're in downtown Chicago and you're having like this amazing kitchen and bathroom to yourself in one room. It, it's, um, it's generally, I think like one of the best parts. And then there's the Buckingham, which is the furthest away from like the main building areas. And so that's an apartment style. And so, you know, you have your separate bedrooms and then you have like living area and then a kitchen and then like depends on the number of bedrooms the apartment is like you have the number of like washrooms also so i like i i was generally very impressed with the saic residences because i've gone to a few colleges and seen their residence halls and i was just like well yeah you know i'm living the life the worst part i mean sometimes um in terms of like just meeting people like the hall i was in the jones hall it was not it wasn't as like connecting and like there wasn't much to do there like there was only one studio um buckingham does not have a studio because it's like an apartment style and there are people from other colleges also who are residing in that apartment like the residence halls aren't close by it's like one is like two blocks away and then the other is like two and a half, three blocks away. And sometimes you need to, if you want to reach fast and you take the train, but then you need to wait for the train or you walk, like do a 10 minute walk and it, you kind of be lazy. Like, how do you go meet your other friends? Because like a lot of people don't want to leave also their residence hall. Yeah, definitely. Like, um, so in my second semester, you know, I reached out to a few other people and I really like connected with them and then I met them quite a bit. And, you know, as you grow your friend circle, you kind of feel more, sometimes more at home because um, sometimes you connect with people and um, those are two Indian people. So like, you know, I kind of, I'm very down to earth. So I was very happy to meet them. And that is when I felt like, hello, okay, yeah, you know, I'm finally like fitting in. Um, but, um, you know, it was even like in my first term, it was really nice because there are so many activities, like there was this whole Christmas um, carnival kind of small food thing. And I would go there with my friends and it was just, you know, these small, small things are actually what make, you know, make you feel at home at, in a college place, not for me, it wasn't like this one big thing. It was just a series of small things. And yeah, the only part was that, you know, halfway through second semester, everything went downhill because you had to go back home and everything. So I'm really excited to go back to college this semester so that I can like relive that and like kind of fit into college again, meet new people because like I did not get to know as many people in my first year. and you're supposed to do that in your second semester, but, and I was in the process of doing that. That's an amazing experience. And I am so glad I went to an art college because so many people were telling me, hey, go to a liberal arts college, apply to that college, like, you know, give yourself more options. But I only applied to solely art colleges, like which were focused on art because I know I want to do that. And usually like, you know, um, if you go to college council, it would be like, hey, open up your options. But sometimes, you know, I like, I just did not want to do that. It's just amazing going to an art college. I'm so glad I did because there are so many different things available. There are so many people so driven, like, you know, they are, they want to do so many things. 
and the scale of their artwork, how ambitious they are, it kind of like drives you also to do bigger things. And like we have compulsory art history classes and then you're learning so much about art, like, you know, and what affects your art today. And then we also have like 20% of our curriculum is also into liberal arts. So it's not like we aren't doing any liberal arts classes. I took a maths class, I took a class on Marxism, I'm taking class on like social science, like decolonization. So it's not that we don't have like liberal arts, but because especially since SAIC is interdisciplinary, you have that fusion of different art forms coming together that, you know, it's not just one art stream. It is not just painting you're doing. It's different things. And that is where like society is heading, like, you know, combining different things. And I think that's amazing doing solely art because as like, I'm progressing, I'm seeing the importance of art in the world, you know, it is something people like, look, like, you know, look up to because it is something you connect with. And I definitely encourage, like want to encourage, like, you know, more Indian students to apply to art colleges because it is an entirely different experience. It's like, I think I have a different type of personal growth and mature differently because you are viewing society, like, my work is on society, I like to put like you know put my observations of the world in it and I think art college has really helped me do that because you have so many different facilities you have available like you know you have so many 3d printers you have like laser cutting you have like a welding shop so 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 many like a workshop so many facilities you wouldn't have available at like a liberal arts school like obviously a liberal arts school do have a lot of facilities, but you know, there's a college solely focused on providing you with that stuff. So it's a, a huge advantage and like a really good opportunity for you to explore yourself as an individual also. Personally, like I've loved being going to an art college because I also have that exposure of being liberal arts and like I can combine that with my art because put that meaning or like whatever I am doing. Yeah, I think, I think it's really cool. Um, and I think it's a really unique experience that like a lot of people should be looking into. You have to know that you want to do art. It does take a certain amount of like knowledge about yourself and your path in the future to decide that you want to do um, like to apply to art schools. But I think if you have that, then there's no reason why not to do it. So um, I personally am very like focused on sustainability and you know, working for the ecology I personally think that, you know, we should take care of the environment first and then like care about the economy because what environment is going to be there if, you know, you completely destroy it or like there's not going to be any economy. So um, my college is working on sustainability. Like we have some, you know, beehive things like, like on the rooftops and everything. But it, I don't think personally that it's quite yet there. Like we just started this whole compost thing also. But then again, I like, you know, in many aspects, it's very lacking because there is a lot of waste being accumulated in any college, you know, we still use plastic. It's not that we don't use it, you know, in the dining halls, a lot of plastic usage. It's not like, you know, it's disposable cutlery and it's not like uh, BU has like, like, you know, ceramic plates and like metal forks and spoons. I thought that was really good because you're reusing things like, and as like a person, I'm trying to work on art and sustainability together. Um, it has always been there because, you know, art is, comes from nature. It is a very, like they coexist together. Right, you find art in nature, there is nature in art. I just hope SAIC can work more on like the whole sustainability front because I was talking to one of my professors. She is like also trying to push like the organization to do more because I don't think it, like it's a tough thing to do because like we are like the US economy, like it is a capitalist society and it is it produces so much waste. So it is hard for any college to try to be sustainable.